Following the collection of data in an experiment, you typically present your outcome in graphical form. Let's do an example to ensure you know how to do this. We've collected the following data in a situation where we attached various masses to the end of a spring, and then we measured the resulting stretch of the spring each time. We access a nice grid and we're ready to prepare our graph. Let's sort out the titles. The main title could be Spring Stretch with Varying Masses. Of course, this could vary a bit depending on the scientist, but a good title will explain the situation similarly. Before we do the axis titles, let's ensure we know which is the independent and which is the dependent variable. Let's see. We physically attach the masses 50 grams at a time, so we're controlling the mass. So the mass must be our independent variable, belonging on the x-axis. We measure the resulting stretch each time. So the stretch measurement must be our dependent variable and belong on the y-axis. Next, let's establish our scales for this graph. On the x-axis, we have mass, which goes up to 300 grams. So we need to fit 0 to 300 grams along this axis. Note that picking a scale involves some creativity. We want to use as much of the available grid as possible without overshooting. Using less than half the grid is generally considered poor practice. So for this situation, we want to get from 0 to 300 and we count our squares and find that we have 27 squares along the bottom. So 300 divided by 27 equals 11 grams per square. Darn, it would have been really nice if that worked out to be exactly 10. Then we'd have a nice round number and use the entire grid. Unfortunately, this rarely works so perfect. Now, if we did 15 grams per square, it would fit nice, but 15 is kind of an odd number to use. Then half a cell is 7.5 more grams, and that's a bit weird. So we could push it up to 20 grams per cell, but then we're using just around half of the grid. There must be a better plan here. So we look at our masses and realize that we're always increasing by 50 grams. So if we made every two blocks equal to 25 grams, that is 12.5 grams per cell, therefore we just mark each 50 gram increment every four squares. And this will work out nicely for this particular set of data. On the y-axis, we have numbers going up to 32 millimeters. So our graph should be finishing at 35 or 40 millimeters or some round number like that. Again, we count our blocks and we find that we have 20 blocks going up. So it seems that maybe we should use 40 millimeters as that would work out well with 20 blocks. So 40 millimeters divided by 20 blocks equals 2 millimeters per block. If we mark every 5 blocks as 10 millimeters, then we make a nice grid to work with, and it'll certainly use a good portion of our grid. So we're ready to plot our data now. And you know how to do that, so let's not waste your time, and here's the plotted data. The relationship certainly looks nice and linear. We usually draw a best fit line at this point. To be clear, drawing a best fit line doesn't mean that the line has to cross through every point. In fact, in some extreme cases, it may not cross through any points, though that's not typical. Usually it crosses through some of the points and misses others. The main thing is that a best fit line shows the trend of your data, assuming there is one. In our data, there is clearly a linear relationship being shown. So we'll draw our line through the data like this a good representation of our data and its trend. The thing is that in every experiment or set of measurements there are going to be errors. You may not have measured it perfect or one of the masses may not be exactly as it says on it or the spring may have some imperfections or whatever. So we don't trust any one particular point. We just look for an overall trend. And that's one of the great advantages of graphing you can do a nice job of representing the overall trend without getting hung up on any particular point. So at this point, you're done graphing. You've done a nice job to show the data and show your best fit line. 
So it's time for analysis, and that's where the best fit line comes into play.